A few years ago, I gave a lecture at the University of Iowa, and that itself is not unusual. I, I get many invitations to college campuses, but in this particular case, the University of Iowa has a, an arboretum, and one of their chief arborists knew that I'm a big fan of Isaac Newton. And they happen to have some clippings from Isaac Newton's original apple tree. The one asserted to have an apple fall on his head, but that's not actually how that played out. But Isaac Newton's apple tree in Lincolnshire was it's a famous tree. It's Isaac Newton observing apples fall from this tree while simultaneously noticing the moon in the sky, out of which he derives his universal law of gravitation. And so I would later receive in the mail a graft of this original apple tree called Flower of Kent with care and feeding instructions. And so there I am living in a New York City apartment trying to grow an apple tree. And so there it is. It finally sort of sprouted and it's had like five or six leaves. But I knew I didn't have enough room in my New York City apartment for a seventh leaf. So, so I thought I gotta, we gotta find some place to gift this. And so I thought of my own institution, the American Museum of Natural History. And, but then after a few seconds you realize museums of natural history deal in dead things, stuffed things, things of which only bones remain of their existence. And so there's no infrastructure, there's no budget, there's no way to accommodate a living, breathing entity such as a plant. And then I remembered, of course, I'm, I'm born and raised in the Bronx. I, I'm happy to offer you this sapling, Flower of Kent apple, the Sir Isaac Newton tree. Well, we are happy to accept. It's thrilling. I love the idea of a tree that is native um, originally to Eurasia. I didn't know that. And made its way to England, um, where, it, you know, to all of our own good fortune, dropped an apple next to the smartest man who ever lived. Yeah, next to Isaac Newton. <laughs> exactly. Now, the, people th say that the, the legend is that it hit him in the head and he came up with gravity. No, it yeah. didn't. He just saw the apple drop. It's a better story it's, the other way. <laughs> the other way is better, right. Yeah. See, I, I worry that if the apple had fallen on his head, he would have just sat somewhere else. <laughs> He's smart enough to have noticed not to sit under something That's that can drop things on your head. There's a lot of books. There are a lot of books written about Isaac Newton and his discoveries. Uh, I love the man's work. In fact, if there's if a time if I ever invent a time machine, I'm not saying that I am, but if I were, <laughs> the first per place in time I'd go back is to visit Isaac Newton, while he was inventing calculus to solve a different problem that he was working on. So many of us struggle through it in school, and he's sort of inventing it on a dare. So that, that's what I would do. There are many books on it, and I'm not going to... If you just Google Isaac Newton and books, they're all good. His most famous work is called The Principia, which is short for The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. It's written in Latin, but of course there are English translations today. Uh, he's the man. And if you Google my name and Isaac Newton, you'll see a lot of me speaking about him. And then if you Google my name, Isaac Newton, and slow motion, a videographer with way too much time on his hands took one of my comments on Isaac Newton and plays it back in slow motion, and it is simultaneously disturbing and hilarious. <laughs> so uh, they all have like millions of views, so to go check it out if you want to have some fun. Isaac Newton, I mean, just look at, you read his writing. My hair stands up on, I don't have hair there, but if I did, it would stand up on the back of my neck. Right, because this has no particular scientific value. Oh, it's got huge scientific value. Every plant in the New York Botanical Garden has huge scientific value. He's got to say that. He's got to say that. Is a this communicator. Because he's, he's on, All he's on the payroll. Is an so he's got <laughs> we need someone, a brilliant educator. Plus, before you go, I have to show off my Isaac Newton tie. 
I'm just saying. That is pretty cool. Me and me and Ike go way back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got a, a famous uh, image of him here, as well as sort of captured images from his most famous books. This one is the Treatise on the System of the World, mm -hmm. which was his popularization of all of his discoveries on gravity and on optics, and uh, this one primarily gravity. And he, it's where the first diagram showing how something goes into orbit mm -hmm. was ever published. Okay. He's just beautiful. So I've got a garden tile. <laughs> oh, look at that! <laughs> the Enid A. Hop Conservatory, you might recognize the architecture. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, New York Botanical Garden, look yeah, at that. exactly. Look at that. Uh, this is not very obvious, I yes, thought well, I would say. To me, some this people is, are more subtle in their approach. It's style, <laughs> <laughs> this is just a green tie yeah, yeah, from exactly. a distance, you know. Yeah. This is Isaac Newton in yeah. your face. <laughs> yes, apparently so. Yeah. Uh, there have been tremendous changes over the decades, and most of the Bronx is quite pleasant, but the New York Botanical Gardens has always been an escape back to nature from the middle of what would otherwise be uh, urban living and uh, urban life. So it's kind of a sanctuary. Like, it is a sanctuary for anything. Even if you didn't live in the city, if you lived in the suburbs or even the countryside, you'd come here and you have all of these curated plants and flowers, all perfect for the season and the time. And, and why wouldn't everyone want to take a stroll through here every day?